Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am looking at Outer Wilds, which is a little explorer-type game that uh, involves flying from planet to planet. Hey, ready for the big day? Let's do it! I uh, said, let's do it, yes. But the spirit, she's all ready to go. You just need those launch codes. I mean, she's technically ready to go. There are a couple of preliminary tests I could still run. That is, if you wanted to take your time getting those codes. Statistically speaking, it's unlikely we'd blow up another one. Okay, let's go and look for those launch codes. So I, if I look to the sky, I can see... Whoa, there's a little radar dish up there. Oh, crap. And there's a, obviously something I've just fallen into, so I can't see that planet. I'm terrible at using Xbox control. Look, there's a planet there. See how fast it appears to be moving? That's because the whole universe is moving very, very quickly in this. Good luck in your expedition. Any idea where you'll go first? If it were me, I'd check out that gnarled thorny one you can see in the sky on certain nights. I wonder how big it really is. Well, I shall endeavor to find out. Okay. You're really blasting off on that thing, huh? You know Goddard's made some fixes, so they don't explode as often anymore. But you sure won't ma catch me climbing into one. Okay. Have you seen that statue in this observatory? It makes my brain hurt just thinking about it. I wonder if you'll bring back anything that we heard from your expedition. Okay, let's go up to the observatory. Okay, so... The axis is more or less working. I had a problem earlier where it was all inverted. Very annoying. Hey, Chu, should you be in space by now? Oh yeah, gonna practice landing. Let's take a look at this. So I have like a, a model ship here to fly. Let's actually try flying it. Okay, ready? Hey, hey, okay, 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 okay. Oh, crap. Um... Hey! Oh, no. Do it the other way. <laughs> Come on! There we go. Hey, got a. I landed it! Okay. The gravity in this planet is a little harsher than I'd like. <laughs> this thing just moves way too fast for me. Let, let's let's get out of here. Uh, I'm sure the, the real ship will be a lot easier to fly. You know, like, when my life is on the line. Okay, let's go up here. And, oh, and, and, and... Got a dude here. Hey! Oh, hello, astronaut. I'm listening for sounds with my telescope. Everything's interesting in space, but the outpost on the moon is coming in loud and clear. Press... R to use a telescope. Oh yeah, let's look at for something up there. Wait, did I hear something there? Oh look, sounds coming in. I can't go any higher. If I turn around, however, let's do this. There's some sound there. That's kind of cool. Hey, look, you hear the sound cut? This isn't a telescope, this is a tele-audio thing. That's pretty darn cool. Never mind the whole, like, sound in space thing. Okay, um... This is... We're up here, this is a zero-g cave. Pardon me, this is really hard for me to control here. I thought you might be... I might see you before the big launch. Going in, going to get in a bit of last-minute zero-g training? Yep. Great! I've set up an old satellite in the Zero-G cave with three broken nodes for you to repair. Remember, it's Zero-G, so keep you'll keep drifting in the same direction unless you apply an op opposing force. Make sure that force is your thrusters and not the wall. Have at it, and try not to concuss yourself right before the big launch. Yes, sir. I'm up for this. Suit up. <sighs> Space it. Uh, let me put on my flashlight. Oh, there we go. Zero-G cave. Okay. Oh, that's that. Let's go down. Okay, let's try rotating. Ah, there's a satellite there. Okay. 
Yeah, let's. There's a node there. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna. Yeah. Okay, that's me targeted that. So I just need to come in very slowly. Ah! Uh, velocity match complete. Uh, oh yeah, A is stop relative to target. Oh, stop relative to target. Okay, uh, get in a little closer. Come on, I want to repair it. 0% repaired. I gotta come in closer yet? Nope. Ah, there we go. Hold it to repair it! And awesome! Red, green light is good, I presume. Okay. So let's go sideways. Kill my velocity, now go forwards. And kill my velocity here. Okay, yeah, let's go sideways. In here. Oh, 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 kill my velocity, yes. Ah, excellent, repair it! I am an EVA pro by now. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, there's one more to repair though. So, let's go forwards. Ah! This is kind of hard. Looks like the whole thing is... Well, the whole thing's rather good actually, considering it's a thesis project. I mean, it's a whole lot better than my thesis project, but, you know, standards are different, I guess, for actual research. And I gotta go down. Gotta go down. So the the vertical controls are on the shoulder buttons. So it's kind. Of, the controls are almost like. Um, the controls are very much like. I said velocity match. No. No. Down. 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 Ah! I can't get this. Ah! There we go. Okay. Nope. No! Come on. Why can't I velocity match? Ah, come on, repair. Hey, excellent! Oh my god, the concentration there was just ridiculous! Okay, now what way do I go to get back out of here? Um, where did I come in, I guess? Oh, there. That looks like a suspicious... That looks like a likely candidate. Uh, oh, no, no, smashing into the ceiling. And, oh, don't bang my head. Hey, excellent. Now. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay. I'm not used to this by any means. Okay. Hey, excellent. And I'm out of here. Ha! Successfully repaired the satellite. I hope I don't have nearly the problems in, in the space. I'll talk to the dude and see what he says now if he's if he gives me some credit. Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressed when you're hurtling at vast speeds through the endless voids of space. And with that, your training is officially complete. Welcome to the space program. I can see you're already itching to get off this rock. You'll find the codes over at the launch ob at the observatory. Okay. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I put so much time into training you. Yes, sir, coach, sir! And I guess over the other way, that's where the observatory is. That giant dome is what the observatory looks like. Cool. This is just like a nice little world to explore right now. It's very, um, I don't know. It reminds me a lot of different games, I guess. Very cutesy, the aliens are nice. I mean, obviously not aliens, because I am an alien. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's like a picture from here. And this is a picture. Oh, but is that? If I Can I turn this on? No. Nope. No, nope, that doesn't work. So much for that. Okay. Ooh, that looks like part of a face, doesn't it? That's very odd. Um, this. Read! Read! The ancient statues is the subject of much debate. Our more imaginative finger thinkers 
argue that it exists in every possible configuration simultaneously and only collapses to a single state while it is being observed. The more rationally inclined believe that it simply phase shifts whenever you look away. Whatever the explanation, both sides agree that the effect is extremely creepy. Okay, let's try that. Look away. Oh my god! That's cool. It's, it looks like it's, it's a head and only bits of it appear. I wonder if it's a human head or an alien head. Count the eyes, that's the trick. I think it looks like it might be a human head. A scary alien human head, obviously. Oh, never mind. Okay, let's see what else is in the observatory. We have... a uh, whiskey still, obviously. All of our spacecraft are powered by the intense chemical reaction that takes place inside this highly reinforced energy converter. Originally, the conversion chamber wasn't reinforced at all, but that changed after an early model successfully converted 78% of the ship's hull into usable energy. Which is great unless you're trying to use your hull as a hull. Helmets like these are our explorer's windows to the universe. Every helmet is custom made to fit its wearer with a stylish gold visor that provides protection from direct sun exposure. Presuming that you're not trying to land on the sun. This pilot seat is all that remains of our species inaugural flight into space. <laughs> Clearly they're very curable. Although it's been argued that such distinction requires an overly liberal definition of flight, that day will always remain a landmark achievement in the history of our planet. I'm liking these, this uh, museum. Our planet is the only one in the solar system with an oxygen-rich atmosphere, which means our astronauts must carry their own supply with them. These tanks are designed to automatically refill whenever oxygen is present, which allows the wearer to avoid an incredible painful death by asphyxiation. Yes, well, asphyxiation. So. These five displays depict the life cycle of a massive star similar to our Sun. Such a star will remain in the main sequence phase the longest as it gradually fuses hydrogen in its core to helium. And this one. Once all its hydrogen has been fused into helium, the star begins fusing helium into even heavier elements. Yes, it turns into a red star. This star is no longer generating heat by nuclear fusion and the core becomes unstable and contracts. The outer shell of the star, which is still mostly hydrogen, starts to expand. That's not quite right, but this is a different universe. The star is now a red supergiant and well into its dying stages. As its core fuses heavier and heavier elements, gravitational collapse becomes inevitable. And after gravitational collapse, you get a supernova! Finally, the core collapses and the star explodes in a massive cosmic event known as a supernova. Our best estimates indicate that our own sun will go supernova in less than two million years. Wow, these guys are in a short-lived star. This tooth belongs to an adult version of the juvenile angler fish in the tank. If adult proportions are consistent with that of the smaller fish, they must grow to nearly the size of our spacecraft. Ooh. And this is the angler fish in here. Not given much to do, I guess. This living anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our spacecraft after a close flyby of dark bramble. Mm. Judging by the size of the recently discovered adult anglerfish tooth, construction of a larger tank might be necessary. <laughs> What's this? Read. This is kind of interesting. What is this? Watch closely, these balls move on their own, because the physics engine is broken, obviously. Mm. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? Mm. The answer is the moon! As it orbits our planet, the moon's gravity pulls objects from different directions. It's pulling on you right now! Absolutely. I wonder if we can look, find the moon out there. That's pretty cool, nice picture there. I'm liking this stuff. Well, wait, we missed something in here, right? Ah, this is the observatory, I guess. There's a dude here, let's talk to him. He said, There you are, I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good, except... Except, ah, that is to say, to be honest, I've been getting some disturbing reports from the other travellers. 
Brittle Hollow's moon is starting to break apart and seismic activity has been detected beneath the hourglass twins. Oh, there are storms brewing in the giant's deep and, well, you get the picture. Things are changing out there and faster than we've seen. Sounds like it could be dangerous for the expedition. Speaking of you, oh, you're go for launch. Here are the launch codes and you be careful out there. Woohoo, launch codes, excellent. Let's view the map. Ooh, too sweet. We have this solar system. Twins, Brittle Hollow, Giant Deep. Nice. Uh, how do I get out of this? Oh, yeah, I press this to close them up. Okay, nice map. Don't need to look at it. And I can't actually look through the telescope. So much for that. I hate first person games that use the joypad. I guess I just have trouble. Okay. Some of, some of her own expedition gear actually incorporates technology we've reverse engineered from ancient artifacts. This surveyor probe Mark IV features a limited warp ability that has dramatically reduced the rate at which our astronauts lose them to the depths of space. In theory, this warp technology should also work on organic life forms, but further experimentation has been recently hampered by a sudden shortage of volunteers. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> This piece of ancient technology bears a marked resemblance to the slide projector in this observatory's atrium. Assuming this advanced alien technology adheres to inexplicable, inexplicably similar principles, we believe it to be some sort of data projection device. Further research will undoubtedly ensure if we ever figure out how to turn it on. Ensue. Uh -huh. Ooh. This 1.5 million year old skull belonged to one of the ancient people who used to dwell in our solar system. Although we have unearthed many of these artifacts and structures, we still have no idea where these people came from or what happened to them. With only three eyes, it's easier to wonder if their disappearance had something to do with inferior depth perception. Ha! Pyramid, ooh, that looks kinda cool. The discovery of some this stone codex and the hourglass twins has allowed us to translate many of the symbols left behind by the ancient people who used to inhabit our solar system. Although this translation is an ongoing effort, we are fairly certain that this specific inscription is a recipe for cactus stew. <laughs> cactus stew? Wow, I should bring that over to uh, Star Maid so I can, you know, build that. If I ever get hungry, I can take some of my spaceship and turn it into stew. That would be, you know, useful. Why is it loading? And it's crashed. Okay, well, uh, sorry about that. This is a bug with Unity that causes the recording to crash. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, there's one other thing that I missed, I guess. Um, you, there's this plaque up here that you can't read, but if you actually walk up the wall, you can get up to it and read, and it says, This crystal was taken from an ancient ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. I see. And, of course, from here, I can jump up. Yeah, and jump off the wall. And I have actually reloaded, I forced the reload this time, so I've got my codes. So I am just heading for the launch site, right? Oh, let's get over this. Get to the launch site. See it there? Spaceship and everything. I am so ready to go into this solar system and explode. Uh, explore. I mean, obviously, you know, Freudian slip there. Launch codes entered. Elevator activated. Here we go. And there is my magnificent chariot of the gods. We are ready to explore. Oh, yeah. Here we go, look, there's the energy converter that we had in there. We have this computer thing. What do I have here? Unexplored location, okay. Timber Heath, uh, cradle of our species. Our village is nestled in one of these many, under the many craters that dot the surface. And gear, read, what's this say? This surveyor probe is designed to help our explorers map the environment and assess dangerous situations. It features forward and rear-facing cameras, most really reliable hazard detector, and a powerful floodlight for illuminating the darkest reaches of space. Except you can't actually illuminate space because space, you know, you shine a light and to illuminate something, photons have to bounce off it, and photons don't tend to bounce off of, like, space. 
Okay, so I'm flying now. Uh, let hey, look at this. I'm now flying. Hey, look. It's like a, it's the same controls as we have for the... We have the same controls as we had in the spacesuit. Okay, what am I looking for? Oh, there's the moon there. Let's let's go look for the moon. Uh, how do I tar can I target the moon here? Aha, landing mode. Oh no, I don't want landing mode. Where's the moon? Where where'd it go? There it is. There. Let's do that. And so I need to go this way. Kill my velocity. Go forwards. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, crap. And I crashed into the planet again. Yay, but I bounced off. Isn't that awesome? Our spaceship is tough. This this is a ship to be proud of. Okay, there, we're, there we go again. Okay. Okay. But the moon is now moving downwards. Let's, let's get on to that moon, huh? Okay. And I gotta slow down now. How do I rotate? How, what's the button to rotate? Oh, there. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, totally landed here. Who needs landing mode? Okay, now I gotta X, X to exit. And I can probably get at the bottom of this. Open hatch. And go wandering. So, you can talk to this dude here. He's the pirate DJ that's been broadcasting cool music. Welcome. It's not often I get visitors up here. You know it, being a moon and all. What can I do for you? Where's that music coming from? See that radio over there? I cobbled it together. <laughs> Calibrated it to pick up the music being played by the other, four other travelers, out exploring the solar system. If you look at the other planets through your telescope, you might be able to hear them too. So I can look at these. Cool, okay, that can't do much. Uh, anything, what do you do up here? I'm warden of the Lunar Lookout. The other travelers used to stop here for repairs, but I haven't seen them in what seems like forever. Don't tell anyone, but I spend most of my time launching probes at the village. Turns out probes fly farther the longer you hold down the launch button. I even hit the observatory once. Okay, let's try launching a probe. Gotta find something to... Okay, let's... Right button. Ah. Uh, nice. I can take a snapshot. Ooh, let's get it in that hole. Nice! That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Uh, so where are we gonna go now, I wonder? I guess we can take a look. Is there any other planets up there? I probably investigated it. Let's just get back in the ship and see what else there is to go to. Whoa! Um, X. Oh, wait, maybe there's a new entry in the computer now. Can I take a look? Um, nope. No, I thought there would be like a, an entry for the moon. So much for that. Let's go back and fly again. Because clearly I was so good at it. Um, yes! Flying away into the sky. And, oh crap, of course, we go, the thing's tightly locked to the planet. So, I should probably go this way. Okay, now we gotta find a target. Let's just keep flying around until I see something. Oh, oh. Oh, is that a planet? There, that, that's the moon. So, we've got the moon, so let's go towards that. What was that? Something exploding in space? No, no, I'm not. I wanna target that. There we go. Nine kilometers away. People think that the Kerbal solar system is small. This thing is positively minuscule in comparison. Hey, look at that. We're totally going toward... Oh, wow, it's like a, a water planet. Cool. I'll probably have to slow down a little. Um, although maybe this is just as robust as previously, as other ones. Oh, slow down! Ah! Splash! Ooh, wow, it's like a... Okay. It's floating on the surface now. <laughs> I splashed up. That's kind of cool. Okay. Can I target this thing? What is it? I want to go and see it. I hope it's friendly. What is it? Um, ooh, like there's a hole. In oh, wait, it's going down now. Can I even get down? Or am I, am I just stuck on the surface still? Oh, yeah, I just float on the surface. I don't think I can actually... 
Oh, actually, no, I do. Oh, there. So holding the vertical ones to push me down it only takes me, doesn't take me down very much. And I come back to the surface. But I wonder if I can get out and take a, a look in my hatch. Cool, can I go down now? No. Whoa! Wait, wait, where am I? Uh, I think physics kind of took a, a break. <laughs> I mean, literally, this is like the Kraken, right? Because <laughs> the Kraken was a sea monster. I don't know where my spaceship is now. Ah! Splash! Right, where's my spaceship, I wonder? Oh, there's my ship there, okay. That was not what I expected to have happen. Come on. Let me just get a little closer to this spaceship, and get on board. And how do I actually get into it? I guess I have to go down. And underneath. Yes! Excellent! Oh, right, the co the. Oh, that's excellent. I like the way the thing's like half. Oh, we've got. The thing, the cabin's half full of water now. This planet consists of increasingly dense fluid layers. None of our spacecraft have ever been able to penetrate beyond the upper, outer atmosphere. Uh, I just did that by accident. Maybe I should try to take off now. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think the, the water clipping through. Whoa, what is that? Whoa! Oh my! That's what it was! There's like a giant, um... There's like a tornado or something there. Look! There's a giant tornado! Okay. Okay, where am I? I'm just gonna fly away from this planet, because... Clearly that's not got anything interesting on it right now. Okay. Now we gotta find another planet. What's that one? I'm gonna go there. Uh, 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 target it. There we go. I have no idea what it is, but I need to go this way. So I'm pushing forwards. I, the thing basically shows me how to match velocities with it, I guess. And I guess how fast I'm going. Oh, crap. I meant to target it again. Nope. That's it. I think I'm slightly confused because I it uses almost identical controls to uh, Lunar Flight instantly. And the keyboard controls are basically identical to Kerbal Space Program as well. I'm not sure that's an accident, uh, but you'd think that would help me. Okay, going towards this thing. 477 meters per second, that should get me there in 30 seconds or so. Oh god, this is like a barbed planet. This is probably totally deadly, right? I'm sure, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna die. Let me slow down a little more. 300 meters per second. I actually have pretty good deceleration on this, but I wonder what the gravity is like. Oh, this is like a giant ball of barbed wire or something. It's like someone designing a Kerbal planet from their nightmares or whatever. Okay, now I should be able to just... Oh, there we go, we're on the planet, and I'm now cruising around. I should really figure out what the, the roll controls are, because... Whoa! Yeah, don't hit that thing. Yeah, that's that. There probably is roll controls, but I can't for the life of me figure out what... Oh, there's my probe again. Take a snapshot, yes. Let's recover it, excellent. Okay, let's go forwards. Let's get into this thing a little closer. Ooh! Oh, is that an anglerfish down there? I'm gonna see this thing. I hope. I wonder if it eats me. Because that would be really comedic. Go towards the light. No. Where is this? Oh, come on! This is really spooky, I love it. I have no idea how fast I'm moving. Whoa! <laughs> ah! <laughs> that freaked me out, that was awesome! I really dug that. 
Well, that's a great place to finish, I guess. Um, so normally, actually, you only have 20 minutes to play before the sun goes supernova and time resets itself. And part of the game is going through these time loops until you try to figure out everything that there is to do, basically. But anyway, that's uh, for future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.